Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this week's episode, I am going to try to focus on the hatches on the 240Z. One was rotted out, the original one was all messed up due to the spoiler that they decided to mold in back in the 70s. Rot it all out of the bottom there. So I have a 280Z hatch that I'm gonna try to convert over. It's a series one 240Z hatch, so it has a vents. So I have to mess with that and try to line everything up to make sure I transfer everything correctly. So this is kind of a video. If I convert a 280Z hatch over to a 240Z series one hatch. Here is my 280Z hatch that I have here off the parts car. But you can see there's no vents here. And then this is the original one off the series one. These have the vents. This is all rotted. This is all separated here and uh, just not any good metal at all because they put a spoiler on this. And over the years of it sitting, it had moisture and uh, you can see all the holes that they drilled to put it on there. It just rotted away. So what my plan is to do is to get these vents, cut all these out and then um, weld that onto this good one. But what I found out on this other one is it also has rot. After I was done taking this all down, they had a bunch of Bondo and filler in this, so this is all bad. This doesn't look good where these pinch welds are at. Over here is definitely even worse. So it's kind of like pick your poison, which one do I want to use? This is all good so far. So I think what my plan is, is to take this off, cut this all one unit, all the way over to here and then up so this will be all one this will be all lined up and then i can weld all these pinch welds the same with my spot welder i gotta strip the rest of that other 280z one first make sure i want to go through with it and nothing else is hiding underneath this paint that i have left let me do that now and then i'll make a final decision of what i want to do here is what the fresh air ducts look like from the series one car vacuum head things <laughs> But uh, anyway, this is how they go on. I was, I would just cut my own holes out and make this myself, but I want this to have this lip on it so that it curls over right. And I uh, just decided to do it the right way. So just to cut all this out. But these go right here underneath this car. Kind of connects just real fast, putting it in here. So it goes like that. This hole here lines up. And uh, this, the purpose of these, from my understanding, is to get the exhaust fumes out of the cabin, if you have anything, or keep it away from the cabin, and it vents out um, to the atmosphere. When I was looking at the 280Z without the vents, they still have the holes. These holes lined up. They just had grommets in them. So once I popped this out, I found out that this will line up exactly, as long as I get this right where I want to put these vent holes, this should line up with the vents here. The hole and everything's even the same size down here. So this will line up with the lip just like that. They line up perfectly. So as long as I get these holes in the right spot, I could screw this down from the other side and then I'll be having my 240Z series one conversion all done. <laughs> so the reason why I'm, that I'm doing this, the closest one that I found for a series one hatch that's in good shape was in Maine. I don't even know if he has it anymore, but I'm in Ohio and Maine's pretty far away and the shipping cost was crazy. So I'm gonna to try to do this first. If that fails, then I'll have to look for a series one hash. going to be taking this top layer off here so all this will be coming off this top strip all is one unit about right here cutting it off since this is rotted in here it's just the top layer that looks to be rotted so far so i just got to remove that clean up all the underneath 
but I want to give myself enough room to get a good proper repair. So I'm just going to take this top flap off and then come to about right here, cut it off right here, and then I'll seam it into where this says keep. So I'm not going to be having to mess with folding an edge over. It'll just be a weld right here and then mesh right into this older stuff. This will give me a way to not only repair this whole thing on the top layer, but I'll just be able to lay this down and all the vents will be lined up perfectly. use this whole piece but now I found out that there's a bracket on this back side that I don't want to cut into like I did this on that there's this whole vertical length down here and it supports where this uh, lock mechanism is to pop the, the hatch so what my new plan is is to do it in smaller sections so this is what I'm removing right here all the way down to this edge and this is the most important piece because this is what's gonna line up everything for the curve to bring that um, horizontal vents. So I'm gonna leave that, just gonna do it in smaller sections. after the blast cabinet. This is what it kind of looks like for where that rust was forming at, where that spot weld at, was at. And then I'll fill in this little section as well as this little pinhole right there. I might just weld that up though actually. So probably just replace this small piece here. And then again on this side, I could probably leave this, but just cause it is kind of chewed up a little bit, I think I'm gonna replace two little sections on this as well with a good piece. I wanna make sure this is perfect on both ends before I weld this up or my glass isn't gonna fit correctly in here. And that would be a pretty bad mistake.
going to show you guys a little trick here. So when something matters where you really want to line something up, it's often hard to get this edge if you don't get a perfect gap on it. So as you can see, there's a space right there. And sometimes I, I'm good enough where I can just get it in the corner without keep burning through. But a trick, if I can use a piece of copper, you want to use this as a backing just like that. One, the weld won't stick to this, and two, the copper will dissipate the heat. So I could really go in here and seal it without this burning through because it'll dissipate the heat and then the weld won't stick through. So um, let me just demonstrate how that works out. So see that didn't stick there. If I didn't use that, it would be very hard for me to have built that edge up without burning all the way through. So I'd have a little dip there at the end. So that's just another way of just building up an edge where it meets to the old panel without burning through and creating a little divot right where your new piece meshes into your old piece. I welded the back side, I ground it smooth, so that way I have strong seams on both sides and definitely get a full weld on everything. So there's no pinholes whatsoever. So I decided to, instead of cut this out and replace it, I just decided to use that copper trick and uh, tacking it up that way. I was comfortable with as long as the weld um, held and didn't burn through a lot, which it didn't. So I know there's thick enough metal there. So I got I cleaned all that out as best as I could. Got to clean it out with rubbing alcohol and uh, then I'll spray some of that temporary Rust-Oleum uh, rusty metal primer on it. Put some weld through on all these parts that I'm gonna be spot welding. So this includes this whole section right here, as well as the back side of this on this lip. I have to line this up how I want it, and then I'll be cutting the two panels at one time. And that ensures that the gaps are gonna be correct on here. And then on this, it's what they call tin canning, when they have this popping sort of sound on it. So you can see it's just flimsy. So I gotta really control the heat when I'm doing this weld. I don't want it to warp any more than it already is just because it's so thin. So definitely pay attention to your heat. Now before I go any further than this, I'm gonna weld up these holes that aren't supposed to be here. The outer edge ones are supposed to be here, this one and this one, but these three are not just because they decided to, this is all messed up and broke, so I'm gonna have to get new grill covers. But as you can see, they just drilled right here, right here, and right here making those holes with just some sheet metal screws. The reason why they did this is because the tabs look like they broke off on the ends, which normally go into that. Also, the more that I look at this hatch, let me know in the comments section below if any of you guys out there that really know your Zs know what hatch this is. So I'm thinking this is actually a 240Z hatch instead of a, it came on a 280Z parts car. And I think it's a 240Z hatch, hatch because the glass had the vertical defrosters on this one but this one did not have the vents obviously on the bottom. So what I'm thinking is, was, that was a late model 71 that this is probably coming off of. Just because it only has one of the supports, it has that hydraulic sort of piston, whatever it's called. The 240Zs I know just had one on one side and I know for a fact the 280Z had two. So this only has one connection. This will be the driver's side right here. And this one has the indent, but it doesn't have any holes drilled out for a second piston to, to lift the, the gate up or the hatch. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think this is off of mine design. I know that you are probably out there and watching this. So let me know if you know what this exact year is um, of this hatch. All right, let's get back to it and let me weld up these holes.
Okay, so I did a mock-up of everything before I started welding everything in place. Uh, I wanted to make sure everything fit, so I put those black vacuum-looking pieces, cleaner-looking pieces up here. So as you can see there, it is fitting, and then it goes all the way up and uh, kind of goes into here. I was able to line them up perfectly, so it might not look like it on camera, but everything, once I weld it on, is gonna be perfectly even. So the biggest obstacle I have to make sure I don't do now is just because it's such a thin panel, I don't want to warp it. So this has a lot of tin canning, so I just got to make sure that I really take my time and uh, tack it really slow. I'm not going to show you guys, bore you guys to death on fixing this. All I'm planning on doing is just cutting this out, fixing underneath it, and then welding two pieces um, back on. I decided to weld up these holes where the Dotson logo is going to be. I just want a cleaner hatch in general and i was thinking if i do want to have the emblems on i don't have any original metal emblems for the back i'll just get those plastic ones stick them on there without even worrying about the holes at all with some double-sided tape that's if i decide to go back so i'm going to do the spot welds next I'm using my harbor freight 240 volt spot welder so i marked everywhere that i'm planning on putting a spot weld with the red marker make sure you clamp it and then I hit it down with the hammer too and then put a dolly behind it just to make sure everything is super um, tight together. And then that should be good to weld with the spot welder. Alright fellas, that's going to do it this week. So I know I said I was going to do the frame rails. Um, I decided not to do that. I want to get everything done because I'm between different garages and I only have one welder. I don't want to be transporting, you know, the, the MIG gas and the welder. It's just a hassle to do it back and forth. So I'm doing, decided to do the hatch and then next week I'm definitely going to be knocking out those frame rails. So stick around until then. Again, I appreciate everyone's support and uh, all the new subscribers and everything. That's awesome. So yeah, stick around next week and we'll knock out some 240Z frame rails. And as always, have a great rest of your week.